participation was from reading policy and following uh, previously, just being a member of the community, is that we would be figuring this out. Um, I don't have any intent of continuing to chair the buildings and grounds, so that I don't know if I need to resign or let you know that, but I thought we were going to be doing a bunch of, and that uh, committee does need to meet soon. So that has to be figured out. So that'd be a matter of what you feel comfortable with. If, if you feel comfortable with making that decision tonight, then we can do so. Otherwise, we do it at the next meeting. Um, or you send out an email and announce it, who you appointed to the different committees, right, so, subcommittees. Um, I don't know. I can't speak for David, but I didn't even know I'd be doing this until since a week ago. So I haven't communicated anything about what I'd like to do. So what I would do is ask if um, any committee members have not, so for the new members um, and anyone who else who has not communicated to me what their first and second choices would be, um, so please do that and I will um, send an email and we can um, reconstitute the, um, the subcommittees at our next meeting. So respectfully, I would also go back to the policy where each subcommittee is provided what the goals mm -hmm. and what the subcommittee is. So to ask new members, they don't even know what subcommittees exist. Mm -hmm. So you can't ask people to sign up for subcommittees. They don't know what they are. So there's a lot of background information that's outlined in that policy mm -hmm. that needs to be done. So Referring, referring people to that policy, or we, are you asking no, the you school that we need to this define what the we need to do the work of defining what those subcommittees are. Yes, I was in the process of doing that myself for the um, buildings and grounds. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so if you if you look at policy BDE, which was in our packet, huh. right BDE. That was sent out. Yes. The school committee shall appoint members of subcommittees at their annual reorganizational meeting for a period of two years. These subcommittees may be created for a specific purpose and to make recommendations for committee action. So at that point, as the committee, we have time to get rid of committees or create committees if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, Number one, the subcommittee will be established through the action of the committee, so that's all of us. That's not the chair. The committee chair, subject to approval by the committee, will appoint the subcommittee chair and its members, which you said is past, past practice is a little different. And then it goes on to say the subcommittee will be provided with a list of its functions and duties, which we do not have. Or the subcommittee may make recommendations for the committee action, but it may not act for the school committee, the subcommittee, excuse me. And then all subcommittees of the school committee are subject to the provisions of OML, Open Meeting Law. Um, so in the interest of time, because we do have a long agenda this evening, what would you suggest we do at this point? I, I, we, I can put together some descript descriptions and send that out to people in the next couple of days, and then yes, we start so this meeting. So I thought that, and apparently this didn't happen, that the each subcommittee was going because we talked about that setting setting the parameters. What is it that you do? That each subcommittee was going to have a conversation, put together a paragraph of this is the purpose of the subcommittee, and so that that work would be done and already you know mm -hmm. have happened, so that like you said, people coming on or might be changing subcommittees would be able to read what it is that they'd be doing. So I'm going to assume that, that we don't have that document. I think if, I wonder if uh, MASC would have a document that would for each subcommittee, but no, they don't? They That's don't. unfortunate. They have, some, they have some. I was able to get it for buildings and grounds and facilities. Um, but you can also look, yeah. So in the interest of time, I could talk quite. Yeah. at length about this. Mm. I 
think I, I remember know. the old paper copy of the old manual um, before it even got into our Dropbox that there were descriptions. Mm. And I, since I have a copy of that old paper manual, I certainly could check that when I get home. Yeah. You can see it's on the website also. That would be good. Okay. Um, anybody has his hand raised? What was that? Nathan? Yes. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, I think we should go ahead and, and do what we can to define these um, in a quick manner. Because mm -hmm. um, there, you know, there might be a existing definition, but that's something that those committees can then develop. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, we do have a meeting with the Buildings and Grounds Committee coming up. So we have two members on that. It would be great if we could have a third. It's not scheduled. OK. There's no meeting coming up. OK. Never mind then. I mean, it needs to be scheduled by a chair. Yeah. I thought it was the 12th. It hasn't been posted. OK. Because at the reorganizational meeting tonight, I thought we would be doing this. Gotcha. OK. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was my only, my only yeah. thought on that. So we should just go ahead and you know, establish the, you know, the, the information that we can get to the new members and members who are changing committees, um, and then submit what you want to do and proceed from there. When would you like it by? Um, like two days? Yeah. Good. So we're just, just for clarification, we're just going to move forward with the subcommittees. The existing subcommittees. As are. If we need, we can amend that as we need to. Um, I'm not aware of specific changes that need to be made. I mean, are they, do you have suggestions? Suggestions about adding no, I'm just wondering what subject. committees I'm yeah. are we moving forward and just existing as we have been with the subcommittees and the subcommittee chairs and just moving forward? No, this is the opportunity to reorganize, and if um, people have expressed an, expressed an interest in what they're <coughs> if they want to be in a, on a different committee or and then this, as the subcommittees meet, they'll need to be elected there and a new chair. Does that make sense? No. No. Two things were just said. One, that we're going to email you with all of our with your choices. suggestions. And then, and then two, that we're going to do it right now. Well, the new members haven't had an opportunity right. to think about the... Okay. It, we look, we, we've, ta we've had just yes. had a discussion yeah. about the descriptions and that... New, newer members might not be familiar with what the subcommittees are, so I think they need to have an opportunity to get that. The, yeah. What was just asked of me was to send a description out to, yeah. the, to all the members. So Karen, if you do find that, and you send it to the chair so we can get it out or it can be scanned, that would be real helpful. <laughs> I think it's still on yeah. the website. Nathan? Yeah. Yeah, we're meeting next week. Yes. So let's. Yep, that's on, it'll be yeah. on the agenda for next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, that composition of the subcommittees will be determined by next week. Good. Great. And yeah, just to clarify, so email me if you haven't already um, with what your preferences are. Um, I will get the descriptions out um, in the next couple of weeks. That'd be great. When, so, I, yeah. when I when I first joined, I just signed up for committees. I had no idea and what they were. It was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, building is grounds. I have background in that. Mm -hmm. Curriculum and personnel. That's yeah. great to get on. And um, so I, I had the same experience. I, I had no I idea. I, like, I couldn't okay. find then a description do, in the thousand-page paper yeah. paper thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> so if I was I, pretending I, that I was a yeah. new school committee member, I'd want to know what are the subcommittees. Yes. So. Can someone just read what our subcommittees are? I don't have the list enough. No, no, you don't have to. I mean, we have, a, we have a... I will send out a... Yeah. yeah, if you sent out here our existing subcommittees so that mm -hmm. people can at least know yes. what their choices are. Mm -hmm. Yes, usually it's on the agenda, but that's not no longer on the right. agenda. So. Well, that's true. We listed yeah. them with the names of we people. We used to list them with them. the names, That'd yeah. That'd be good to do. That's not... Continue that practice. All right, so... Moving on um, to citizens' comments. We have Amanda, would you like to please um, state your name and you, the town that you live in? Please try to clo close to the mic. Hold the mic close. 
Same thing. Warwick. Um, and I am here tonight because I first I would like to say thank you for letting me have this moment to speak. Um, and as a whole, I'm trying to advocate for families um, who are interested in keeping their students to be remaining in Northfield Elementary School. Um, and selfishly, I'm really looking to talk specifically about our own children. I have my husband, Michael Mankowski, also here with me tonight. Um, I had sent an email that I'm hoping everybody had received prior to now. Um, and so just a few quick things. Um, I was able to attend our select board meeting in Warwick on Monday and be able to present them with the same information as well as I'm hoping that the um, education task force also received my email as well. Um, but I'm really, our concern is that our kids have had so many transitions over the last three years, especially when Warwick closed. Um, the, the closure and COVID all kind of happened all at once. So there was a lot of trauma that had happened with our children um, and our kids um, had a really hard time transitioning over. Um, our oldest went to fourth grade and it took her the entire year to really get settled. She also has a diagnosis of a generalized anxiety. So any added things just heighten everything. Um, and our, our second grader this year, this is the only school she's ever known. Um, so we are really hopeful that between the school committee and Warwick's transition committee, that there could be some sort of an arrangement that could allow the students um, that would like to remain. I don't know how many that would be, um, but I do know there are a handful of people that have mentioned that they are interested in and that it would be the best benefit for their children for their social and emotional well-being. Um, and that goes um, in hand in hand to say like with the rise in teen tween depression rates and anxiety rates, I know that um, many transitions which would be affecting our who is in fifth grade right now, she will be in sixth grade next year, would mean she would need to move back to Warwick for one year and then move back again here. So rip her away from everything she knows, all of her friends, and then put her right back in again. I know it would be very detrimental to her. Um, so I just really would love to um, just respectfully ask if there's any way that there could be a way to have a transition agreement that is not specifically school choice because we know that school choice does not have to be opened and that would really limit the ability for Warwick to even have an opportunity to stay in Northfield. Um, so if there could be some sort of a grandfathered because they've been there for three years, um, anything. And I know that it's really challenging to come up with an agreement right now because Desi has not approved Warwick opening yet. So I know there's a lot of things on hold, um, but I just wanted to really put it out there that there are parents that are looking to have their kids and it will be the best option for them to stay. Um, and uh, one other thing I did want to say, like I actually uprooted my entire um, Work, work career, um, and I just recently started working at a Northfield Elementary School, which I'm so grateful for the opportunity, and the reason why I did it was because I wanted to make sure that our family continued to become part of Northfield Elementary School's community. So um, with that, you have my letter. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, um, but I just would love to urge to please consider um, some sort of an agreement that doesn't rely just on school choice because that's really scary and not knowing and not being able to talk to our kids um, about what their transition will look like causes a lot more anxiety and, and a whole. Um, so with that, I will step back. So thank you thank for you. having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So we will move on to the approval of the minutes uh, from October 20th. I have some, uh, I have some notes. Uh, uh, um, with the, the line listing, uh, ad administrators present uh, at the end of the line, PVRS uh, interim principal, John Carter, and that's J-O-H-N. Uh, on page two, uh, second paragraph, item B, um, end of the third line, again, John, J-O-H-N. 
page three, uh, first paragraph, item eight, third line, a uh, second line, uh, interim principal, that should be like uppercase P, um, beginning of the third line, uh, Joel, Joel, J-O-E-L, Canal, um, back to PDRS, uh, strike the words short term, which should be only part time. Um, and that's it for me on that set of minutes. I, I think I have a couple that you didn't have. <laughs> on the first page, uh, 4B, under chair, um, there is discussion about reorganization of the school what? School committee? Yes, that was school committee. Okay. Thank you for bringing and, that up. As well. And on page three, uh, Joel Finnell's last name. Oh, gosh, I didn't know. Is F I N N E L L? Will, I think. Yep. And that's twice in that paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Any other corrections? All right, can I have a motion to approve? As amended. Oh. So moved. Michelle, yes. Oh, I was going to move it with the amendments, but I think Alan did. Yeah. Well, you can second. Okay, I'll second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, let's go for a roll call vote. Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Coffin, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Alan Genovese, yes. Gretchen Kelton, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. David Jones, yes. Stephen Michelle. Martin, yes. Sorry, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle Chiruso, yes. And Raina Dastu, yes. That passes. Um, and now the minutes of November 17th. Yes. Um, okay, the bottom of page one, the very last sentence. Um, it goes not in the original. I think it should be so it shows up instead of is show up. It shows up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see, on the page two, Roman numeral four, um, there's a problem in the second sentence. On a motion by Genovese and second by Milton, I think the transfers were unanimously approved instead of, there's no subject there right now. Is that right? Is that what we did? I think so. Seconded. Seconded. Seconded by Milton. The transfers were unanimously approved. Okay, and then under number 5C, it really makes no sense as it is. Um, just my suggestion. Mm. Kinsella shared a DESI memo noting the, and then completely take out the second line. The district's FY22 federal grant program review has been completed and approved. I think that's the sense of what you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Uh huh. And that's what I have. I have one item on the last page, page four. Item number nine, second to last line. Uh, Kinsella noted that Jill Ledger will be moving into the role of NES librarian assistant, and librarian assistant should be capitalized. Any other corrections? I move that we approve these minutes uh, with the amendments just made. Thank you. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Could we just read um, 5C and in in how it's been changed? 5C, oh, okay. 
you want me to read that again? That, yeah. Okay. Kinsella shared a DESI memo noting the district's FY22 federal grant program review has been completed and approved. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready for a vote? Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Coffin, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Alan Genovese, yes. Gretchen Kelton, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. David Young, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle Jerusso, yes. Stephen Martin, yes. And Raina Dastu, yes. Thank you. All right. So, moving on to the students' report. Our student representatives. Uh, so here is our December PBRSD School Committee Student Representative Report, which you can see on the TV. So first, I am going to present about Burniston Elementary School. So I visited BES on Tuesday with Ms. Kinsella and Interim Principal Schultz, and I got to see uh, pre-K, kindergarten, grade 2, grade 5, and grade 6. So first up is pre-K, so I got to see them learning the alphabet and the, the letter that they were working on was V, so I got to see the teachers in there working on these, uh, or lots of different uh, activities to learn uh, the letter V. Now grade five and six, so grade five uh, just finished uh, the book Tuck Everlasting which they were super excited to share with me. Uh, and they started to talk about different literary elements that they found in that uh, book, such as theme. And then they also talked about water cycle project that they worked on and impressed me by saying condensation and precipitation, which are words that I didn't think that they would know. <laughs> and then grade six is working uh, for their mistletoe market at BES this weekend from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So they were working on origami uh, garlands and they made all these origami paper trees, which also really impressed me. So they will be selling those at the mistletoe market. So if you're free on Saturday, go check that out. And then something to highlight was the social emotional learning aspect that I saw throughout the entire school which was amazing to see. Uh, so grade two, they had a uh, chart about how to be uh, friendly and have friendships. And then grade six had a four-step apology to really talk about uh, how you're supposed to apologize and move on from uh, something like that. This, uh, so uh, this Tuesday, I went to NES with Ms. Kinsella, um, and we were able to tour the 6th, 5th, and pre-K classes. Um, during the 6th grade class, I noted how yeah, uh, the students were matured and focused, mature and focused. Um, if not completely enthralled in the subject, they were paying attention, they were collecting information. And once they were released to work on their assignment, they're currently working on 3D shapes, they got right, right to work, grabbed their supplies, sat down, um, and were given the option to work as they needed to, either with a partner or uh, alone at a table, just quietly working and learning while doing so. Um, in the uh, sixth grade, at NES is divided into two classes, one for math and science, one for reading. The group that was in the classroom for reading and writing were working on writing short stories, which they uh, enjoyed telling me about. I'm talking about struggles, um, stories about fictional characters, and I noticed that they seemed to be potentially talking about some of their own, own things without realizing it. Um, and I was also informed by the teacher that while they don't really know it, they're working on foreshadowing right now. Um, when I got to fifth grade, I was able to introduce myself to all of them. Um, and learned that they're currently working on teamwork and just playing, learning, 
um, teaching, leading, all that stuff. Uh, pretty cool. Your uh, desks all seem to be organized, uh, showing that they're learning how to prepare themselves, how to be ready for high school and sixth grade once they moved up to that jump from having two separate teachers. Um, and they also showed me how they had worked with the other class to make a giant piece of artwork where each student created one little tile and they put the whole thing together. Um, then we moved on to pre-K where we learned that they're currently working on sustainability. Um, so littering, uh, protecting the earth, all that stuff. They're working on individual presentations to give to the uh, older grades. Um, be, be good, show that they're not only learning about the topic, but they're giving the opportunity to teach others about it. They have a section with what we might just throw out or put in the recycling to build and create with. Um, they are also finishing up a study on decomposition of pumpkins, writing down notes as the pumpkin decomposes. Um, what else? And they're also starting to realize that letters actually have meaning, and while it's not quite full sentences, they're, they're trying to, to uh, convey their thoughts and ideas through words, which is pretty impressive for their, for the, their level. Thank you. Thank you. So now I am going to talk about uh, Pioneer Valley Regional School. And this month, uh, we are highlighting the science department. So each month, we will art alternate in interviewing and engaging with one specific department within the school. And for this month, I interviewed three out of the four science teachers to learn more about their classes and exciting projects happening. So first up, as you might have seen when you walked in, over here, there are lots of little birds' nests. Uh, so some of them are real, with real birds. Uh, and then other ones are uh, imaginative, but they all are amazing. Um, so grade seven bird nests. So they're learning about different birds in their habitats and the relationship between the habitat and organism. And then grade eight, uh, they're learning about severe weather and uh, a unit researching different events uh, and presenting in different ways, including becoming a meteorologist. So then we have chemistry, which I do not have a slide for, because they did a debate, which I was not able to get pictures of. But they debated on nuclear energy and whether it should, uh, whether it's sustainable long term or not. And then next up, ecology and environmental science with Ms. Pullen. So you can see uh, some science at work on the left. So we were doing a, um, uh, a project talking about uh, Lemna Minor, which is a uh, plant that uh, Ms. Poland wanted to research. So we did some uh, investigations on that. And in ecology, they're working on a compost lab. Uh, and learning about macro and microscopic organisms, which you can see on the far right, and using mic a microscope to see different organisms in the compost. And then in the middle, you can see some amazing mulching, which happened today out on the trails. So Snow and Sons donated uh, a worker today to help with that, and then John Lepore and another uh, community member helped to dump mulch in the AP environmental class and regular environmental science class worked on spreading that mulch out. And I would like to announce that Ms. Pullen is the first recipient of the Faculty of the Month Award, which is presented by the class of 2023. So we just started this this month to start to recognize the teachers and how much they do for all of us, not just the students, but the entire community. So I just wanted to uh, say that we presented Ms. Pullen with this award yesterday, and you can see a little uh, uh, bulletin board with different comments about her out on your way out. It'll be on the left, and you can check that out. So each month we will present this the week, uh, the week of the first school committee meeting and then announce it at the school committee meeting as well. And then finally, I wanted to present about the after-school program at Northfield Elementary. 
which I am a, an activity leader for. So that's through the Collaborative for Educa Educational Services. So I wanted to give a shout out to Kristen Prophet, the site coordinator there, who is also a special education teacher. Uh, Lynn Hansel, who is a uh, retired teacher from Warwick and Northfield. Don Hubbard, who is an instructional assistant there, and Brittany Pakanka, who is the second grade teacher. So we've been working on lots of different projects and activities for the students. And we have classes such as Spanish language, outdoor adventure, fall seeds and fun, and gymnastics. And our second session starts on January 3rd. Chair report. I want to welcome new members, Gretchen, um, and our returning uh, members, Jennifer and um, Melissa and Karen and Steve and David. Um, so, and myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got lot, lots of work ahead of us, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there are two seats yet to be filled um, for the towns of Northfield and Leiden, and the town clerks are continuing to sort out some um, write-in votes, and um, the moderators will be appointing, uh, well, we're working, sorting out the details. But we're hoping we'll have two new members uh, soon. Um, I had the opportunity and the pleasure of attending the Superintendent's Awards Dinner um, last week uh, to honor Cooper and several of his uh, compatriots uh, from other schools in the dis in the um, in the region, and um, it was great. And I feel like it's exciting and wonderful to hear about all these talented, amazing students and all the wonderful things they're doing. So um, our future is in good hands with them. So. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. So, chair's report. I mean, sorry, superintendent. Report. Well, I am going to except for a couple of points because we have a lengthy agenda including the executive session. Uh, thank you, uh, Matthew and Cooper, for getting out into the elementary buildings. Mm -hmm. It was really great to see them interacting with students, teachers, recognizing them from their younger days. Uh, we are going to set up an email for the school committee student reps and share that with the schools so that teachers can work with students and there's a direct line that will every year be the same email. Um, uh, and I wanted to um, mention uh, Bill Montiglio because he's the second gentleman who was out with John LaFour um, uh, coming here on Saturday and another day, spending a lot of time getting them all to, onto the trails for the kids to um, spread. So I will leave it at that. Okay. All right. Director of Finance and Operations. Okay, I'm going to start with the school committee expenditure report, the green one. Um, so um, one thing I'd like to start with is a general overview. Um, you know, essentially we're five months through, well not essentially, this is, takes us five months through the school year um, and based on the uh, projections I have, um, including the now uh, ratified collective uh, bargaining agreements, um, as it currently stands, I project a three and a half percent uh, budget balance uh, at the end of the year. Obviously, some things can change, uh, however, I think that that will be uh, sufficient to fund the operations, so that's good news. Um, you know, uh, I anticipate us having sufficient funds to uh, um, fund the operation uh, based on the uh, current budget. So um, that's just a point uh, regarding the overall financial situation. And then uh, specifics, um, as I've been trying to do at each of the meetings, I'd like to look at some of the. Uh, budget lines that have negative balances that I haven't spoken about previously and um, certainly hope by uh, February uh, I'll have an opportunity to take care of the majority of these because then all, with all the uh, agreements hopefully at that point being approved by the commissioner um, we'll be able to do a lot of that work. Um, 
So the first item I'd like to look at on page one are the council fees, which has a negative balance of, which is about halfway down the page, and negative balance of $7,352. Uh, that is, those are uh, council fees um, regarding the Warwick transition. Um, so that was an additional expense um, to get all the documents looked at and uh, work with the a new attorney um, to get those uh, documents to where they could be sent to DESE. So um, that is why that uh, line is negative, is um, those fees were not budgeted for. On the first page, could you also just remind me um, on the district mentoring administration or administrators? What is that one? The, the five thousand. Yep. Two hundred forty-five in the. Yep. Um, right. So the, those are mentors for the uh, different um, staff. Uh, for example, our interim principals, myself, uh, uh, staff who are. Uh, oh, thank you. Yep, relatively new to their roles, they have mentors. Um, Thank you. Yep. Um, then moving to page four. In the uh, administrative assistant uh, at Northfield Elementary School. There's a negative balance of $1,361.56, um, and that's due to having overlap between the outgoing administrative assistant and the individual who is uh, replacing the outgoing administrative assistant. Um, so essentially for two weeks, there was uh, overlap in that position. On page seven, um, we have a educator ev evaluation, uh, a contractual expense, um, which apparently I made such a long title for that that, that it, it, it was cut off. So I need to uh, read some Hemingway and work on brevity uh, in my uh, descriptions. Uh, but that's negative 5,000, and, and, and that is. Uh, an outside person that we have hired uh, to do um, some contractual work uh, regarding educator evaluations and uh, ultimately that will be covered by uh, a transfer from the curriculum coordinator line as we currently do not have a cur curriculum coordinator so um, so was this was this item in our previous budget and therefore we had a zero amount or did we, we put that in, in this new budget? Yep, uh, just put in uh, within the school year. So it wasn't budgeted okay. prior to the school year, but uh, yep, put in during the school year. And I believe those are the only new ones uh, that we haven't discussed previously. And as I say, overall, uh, I do anticipate uh, at the moment um, a budget balance of 3.5% by the end of the year. Currently, uh, with all the encumbrances, it shows 13.15%. But of course, uh, what it doesn't show in those encumbrances are the impact of the new uh, collective bargaining agreements um, on those encumbered salary amounts. Um, and so, so though that will also uh, impact the the uh, budget amount. Can I ask another question? Sure. How is how is the mentoring different? You had that other line item for five thousand. This one's for sixteen thousand. What 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 is that for? Yeah, good question. So the administrative mentoring uh, is, is I a, get that one. Yeah, newly hired administrators, and then the the other mentoring is 
um, the mentoring, some of it's required uh, by DESE mm -hmm. uh, for new, newly hired educators um, and, and, and newly hired, uh, I mean, sorry, newly credentialed and newly hired uh, uh, educators receive mentoring. And then the people who are providing the mentoring um, on our staff receive stipends uh, for doing that work. So again, we didn't have that as a line item. We're adding that. Uh, that well, would seem like that would have been yep. a line item. Um, so it was a line item. Uh, however, it was um, completely offset um, by ESSER. Uh, so that that money will eventually uh, be moved uh, onto the ESSER grant. Uh, oh, it will be eventually funded by a grant. Yeah, it, it's just going year? to ESSER. Yes, okay. exactly. So, right, thank you. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. And then I would like to move on to the peach color document. This is hopefully there's no art teachers. Page, oh, of course. Yeah, on the workers' comp, um, on the first page. Yep. Um, like a quarter of the way up. There's this uh, 6,000, is that it was because uh, of new claims or? Yeah, good question. Um, so the, the deficit there, um, there, there's two things that are happening. Uh, one thing is each year uh, our um, workers' compensation is audited and uh, that number often goes down. And so when we budgeted, we budgeted based on um, that lower amount, the actual from FY22. Um, and uh, that number may in fact go down, but also there was um, an increase uh, in, in per per thousand dollars of, of compensation, an increase in the rate for certain categories of employees. Um, so ultimately, uh, that wasn't taken into account when the budget was created. Uh, the fact that there there would be that increase. Okay. I have a question too. Yes. Um, can you help uh, explain why, if there is a deficit in the budget balance, but the budget percentage isn't negative, it's a zero? Like, for example, I was looking over the custodial costs, and there's a 5,000, like a negative 5,000, but the budget says zero. Or the rest of them, if they're negative, the budget says a minus. Let me see. Um, so, like, on which page? Um, page three, about nine or 10 up. This custodial supplies looks like it's minus 55. 5,500, but the budget is not in the negative. It just says zero. Right, and that, that's because on that one, because the um, original budget was to put all of the custodial supplies onto ESSER. So since it's a zero um, for the uh, uh, general ledger uh, budget amount, then it just says zero percent. Whereas if there's a number there, um, it, you know, for example, if it's uh, 10,000, but there's actually uh, 20,000 of expense, then it would show a negative percentage. Um, however, when it's just zero in the budget amount, it just shows zero for the percent of the budget. It's another way to explain that, because yeah. I'm trying to follow that, is yeah. that since it's going to be covered in your encumbering money that's not there, and you're, you know you're going to cover that, um, so there'll be a, so it's projected to be a zero because you're you're covering that complete expense. Is that what you're doing? Um, so any any of the ones that have a zero in the general ledger budget won't have a negative percentage in the um, percentage of the budget. So you know how last night at budget subcommittee we talked about all funds and then there was Front, where that money has no impact on the budget. So is that what is happening here? Um, well, Patricia wants to try and I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested. What I thought. <laughs> it, so in the general ledger budget column, the first column, it says zero dollars. Mm -hmm. So does that mean because it's a zero in that column, you can't have a percentage of it because it's a zero mm -hmm. over in the final column? Yep. <laughs> so, and I, I, I could go out on a limb, uh, and and I think some of our students in higher level math. So I think you know, uh, <laughs> you know, really, right? The the uh, denominator is is the zero here, right? So it says zero percent. Uh, Technically, it's undefined, I believe, but yeah, uh, I, 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 again, I haven't had math in, in quite a long time, so I. I, I don't want to 
I don't want to go. Uh, I, I I don't remember all the Greek symbols, um, but uh, I, I like a lot of Greek meals. <laughs> so so yes, all the ones in general ledger budget that are zero uh, are, are are the the percentage of the budget will be zero percent. Okay, so there's three times that it's listed as zero budget, but a negative balance means that like fifteen twenty thousand dollars that weren't expected to be used under there were used um where there's the zero in the general ledger budget but there's an actual expense but there's a negative in the budget balance yeah um so um the the original plan um i have um i have not followed the original plan um so for example there, there were certain items where um um they, they would say, all oh, custodial supplies, we're going to go to Esser, and they being my predecessors. Um, and I thought that maybe we would do things differently. So I said, well, OK, even though we didn't budget anything on the uh, general ledger budget, and we said it all go to Esser, let's put it on the general fund for now. And then perhaps, and, and I think ultimately this will happen for a lot of items, we will have enough in the general ledger budget, so we'll make a budget transfer, put it there, and then we'd still have our ESSER money to do other things. Um, but until I make those transfers, um, we have the situation of things looking uh, not very neat. Um, <laughs> and, so and nobody else, it was not a big deal that it was that far. I'm so glad you asked this <laughs> question. This is, yeah. this is really helpful to understand. Yeah. Because you've talked about this in the past, yeah. that there were things maybe not budgeted for in the way we would hope, put more on the general ledger, so it said zero for actually charging things to that line. If it shows up as a zero percent, because there can't be a percent of zero, you're going to ask for transfers from other places. When those transfers happen, does the general ledger budget column then have numbers in it? Yep. Other than zero? Yep. So that's, that's where the transfer would go in. Right. Yeah. So, so, so ultimate, right. That. right. So ultimately, for example, um, the curriculum coordinator position that's not failed, you know, when you take the money out of that line item, say it's uh, $75,000, and you move it into, uh, this isn't a great example, but for example, custodial supplies, um, then custodial supplies goes up by that amount, and, and the, the uh, curriculum coordinator line goes down. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Anne, do you have a question? Just a point of clarification. So your goal here, Jordan, is that you're reflecting the actual expenses in the proper buckets. But yes. um, that wasn't the way it was budgeted in 23. But your goal is to budget properly in 24, or at least in the fashion that reflects your actual expenses in 24. Uh, but yeah, and, and I think. Um, it also allows us to see um, a greater amount of what spending is actually going into our operations. And then ultimately, um, we can make decisions on what we want the grant to fund. But hopefully, this adds a level of transparency and clarity uh, so that, for example, um, you know, uh, month to month, we're not seeing all the grant activity. But if we first see it on the general fund and then we move to the grants, I think it hopefully provides some, especially on the operational, because is a, we're in a unique place in time with having so much asset money that can fund uh, your day-to-day -day expenses. Um, so so I, I was thinking that that would also be beneficial for the school committee. Yeah, but, but this way you know the actual cost of running the district all in one yep. place, then you offset it by applying it to grants. Yeah, that, that was my thought process, yes. Okay. So I'm following what you're saying, and it does make sense. I'm wondering... And not to have a discussion, just you can think about it later. I'm wondering if it would be helpful that all of those areas that you're planning on funding with a grant, if it just had grant next to it, so we know that that might be where you're looking for that money rather than a transfer from another line item. Because you probably have a pretty good idea which is coming from ESSER and what's going to probably be transferred somewhere from somewhere else within the budget. Yeah. No, no, just food for thought. Yeah, that, that, that is true. <clears throat> so the uh, the peach sheet. Um, so
So, um, right, looking at the overall revenues, um, we didn't look at them last time, so to go into a little more depth, uh, the first line, uh, bond proceeds, um, those um, have not been, been received yet, um, uh, but will soon, um, and um, we'll get into it a little bit later about uh, renewing the bond, but um, we, we've appropriated all of our excess and deficiency, and uh, received uh, the vast majority of our tuitions um, and 40% of our town assessments. Um, earnings from investments, uh, so the uh, potentially the more favorable interest rate environment is benefiting us uh, in the interest earned on our, uh, on our uh, money market accounts. Um, so we've we've received significantly more there. Um, you know, Medicaid we haven't received a payment yet. Uh, our transportation aid we've yet to receive. Uh, our Chapter seventy eight uh, we've received over half of that. Um, this miscellaneous income, as I mentioned before, is E rate. Um, but overall, our, our, our revenues are coming in as expected. You know, we've received. Uh, um, we 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 have remaining uh, fifty six point zero nine percent of the revenues yet to receive, and we have fifty eight point four percent of the year remaining. So uh, certainly, we see them on pace there as well to receive the amount of revenue that we budgeted. So both sides of of the ledger look good, uh, both our revenues and expenses at this point in time. Okay, so um, if, no one, if no one has any questions, I'll move on to the lunch report. Good. Um, so on the first page, uh, we can see that uh, each of the buildings, uh, BES, uh, each of the buildings had a, a healthy uh, operating profit uh, for the month of November. Uh, BES had a profit of $10,619.62, NES $10,310.92, uh, $10, um, PBRS $3,790.62 uh, for a total operating profit for the month of November of $24,721.16. For the year, uh, an operating profit of $34,000. Five sixteen and thirty eight cents. So um, things are going well there. I mean, we talked at length at the last meeting about the benefits of the um, free school lunch for all uh, program here in Massachusetts. And not only, obviously, the most important thing is it benefits students, but it also helps ensure the uh, um, solvency of school lunch programs in schools. So that's good as well. Um, the second page. Um, Just a question. Of course, right yes. Here. Did we send it? We, have, we haven't sent it yet. Oh, thank you. That's pretty good when you can read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, the second page about the um, DESI information. Uh, you know, uh, again, I think we talked about this a lot last meeting, so I won't uh, belabor the point, but, uh, um, you know, this just shows total meals served um, at, the, at the respective buildings. BES has a total of uh, breakfasts and lunches of 5,166, uh, NES 4,477, and PVR is 4,026. So not as many students at PVRS eat breakfast as, as at the elementary schools. Um, but still uh, admirable amounts of pr participation in the school meals programs. Um, so, um, and, and a uh, operating profit. So all good news on the school lunch front. Gordon? Yes. Do you know if we have resolved the um, kids who bring their lunch getting, having to pay for milk? Yes. Uh, I, I, to my knowledge, that is, I mean, it's 
resolved the school music committee has resolved it in, in voting to approve that um, milks will also be free individual milk so Okay, just want to make sure that happens. Yeah, no, of course. I, I think that's a, a, a wonderful initiative the school committee decided to take. So that's good. Um, so commissioner's approval of the FY23 budget. Uh, that's good news. Um, I think an important, I, I'm, I doubt people want me to read it aloud, but um, I, I think an important point within it uh, is is about sustainability in our use of uh, our revolving accounts and, and you know specifically school choice um, and not relying too heavily on school choice um, to fund our, our operations of the school so I think that that's going to be uh, well uh, clearly it's a focus of the commissioner um, and it's something that you know in speaking with our financial overseer um, she understands and will contribute to our budget process and ensure that um, our ultimate allocation of school choice is within the parameters that will be approved uh, by the commissioner. Um, so we also renewed the, uh, the bond anticipation note. Um, so previously, uh, the amount of the note was three hundred seventeen thousand two ninety one and eighty cents. Um, it was scheduled. This is the fifth year of the note out of ten. Uh, it was scheduled to be uh, renewed for two hundred seventy one thousand nine sixty four and forty cents. Uh, but this year we are also applying uh, Warwick's advance payment. Uh, so uh, of Warwick's advance payment of twenty seven thousand eight twenty six and sixty seven cents. So ultimately, we re renewed the note for a lesser amount uh, uh, for 244137 cents. And speaking of interest, um, the interest is much higher um, because um, as probably anyone who's watching the news or uh, interested in personal finance knows interest rates are a lot higher. Um, so. Um, the interest paid is is uh, much higher, so the interest paid on this note will be ten thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars and eighty-five cents. Um, however, in you know, in in a um, uh, fifteen uh, more than fifteen million dollar uh, general fund budget, um, that isn't a huge uh, component of the budget, and um, I think as as we've discussed previously. Um, Paying off the note in advance prior to 10 years um, could lead to um, additional oversight that um, might not be um, potentially in the in the in the best interest of of the operation of the school. So uh, we're continuing to uh, um, follow the 10-year schedule of of repayment, and the interest rate is 4.25 percent. So uh, still lower than than uh, a lot of interest rates people are paying um, on uh, mortgages, et cetera. Did it, say, did it say on here what our, what's our overall rating? Our credit rating? Yeah. Um, it should be on here, right? Moody rating? I was looking for it, but I, I probably just... Yeah. Um, what do you think? No, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, I think that um, the lenders probably do not go as deep into our financials as they might on, again, like if you're thinking of a personal finance or a corporate uh, credit rating because of the fact that, um, you know, we have the backing of the state. Um, so not that I received. Interesting. Uh, um, but we do we do submit our audited financials um, as part of the process and and and, uh, and the banks review them. But uh, we're generally yeah sure. Thanks. I also have a question. I hope it's not ridiculous. But oh. can you please explain the purpose of it? This is my first time hearing about it. So what is it and what's it for? Yeah, um, and. 
I don't have the entire history. Um, yeah, just uh, like four. However, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'll do my best. Um, so, um, is is part of uh, special legis uh, sp part of special legislation when we had a operating deficit, to my understanding, and and people who were here can certainly jump in and correct me um, if and when I say something incorrectly. Um, you know, we had financing extended to us from the state to be able to cover that deficit, okay. and uh, this is the repayment process um, of repaying the state for uh, filling in the uh, financial deficit. Um, and so being able to repay it over a period of 10 years um, was deemed appropriate by the state, uh, and, and so it wouldn't, you know, negatively impact our, our, our financial situation in a single year. So we have, you know, so this is... Uh, a refinancing we do each year um, to slowly pay down at, a at like uh, approximately forty-five thousand dollars each year. Repay that four hundred fifty thousand dollars that the state extended us in uh, two thousand eighteen. Thank you. Of course. May I, may I, may I have one thing? Of course. Uh, two things. Uh, so because of that legislation, we have the fiscal overseer. Okay. That's why we have. Uh, Currently, Cami Lamica, mm -hmm. who's a, just terrific to work with. Um, and secondly, an additional financial ramification is that the state required that the district set up a special reserve fund uh, that we contribute into each year. It's basically um, like a savings mm -hmm. account. And I think FY24 might be the last year we have to make a contribution. Is that maybe? I mean, the certainty on your face makes me think that it, it may very well be. <laughs> I believe that FY24 is, is either the last year or penultimate year. Uh, and um, uh, once we meet the threshold for that special reserve account established by the state, we won't have to pay that. And it's been um, about $70,000 a year. And I think yep. our last year is $35,000. So that's a bit of a savings we will see okay. in the future in our overall budget. Yeah. Yeah. In, in some ways, that's advantageous because generally, you know, statutorily we're limited in the amount of reserves we can have and so this provides us a, a separate rainy day fund that um, uh, that other regional school districts don't have access to so I think it's a good thing in that sense yeah. Michelle you have a question or a comment no I just like to add it was um, the lunch program deficit for many years that we kept letting go and go and go um and so now it's we're repaying things that were done for many years in the deficit for the new people great thank you there are no transfers this year no transfers no, no budget transfers okay. all right so moving on anything else okay thank you um, so subcommittee reports, um, I'll start off with negotiations. The PBREA has ratified the uh, agreement and we will be discussing that and return tonight during um, our executive session and we'll be returning t for a vote to vote on that in open session. Um, and then let's see other committee subcommittees that might have a have met, I think it's just budget subcommittee is the only one that's met since our last, or, and war for transit. Okay. Um, Michelle, do you want to give a, um, an update for the budget subcommittee? Yes, um, we had a community forum last week um, that um, had representatives from each town and it was a very collaborative meeting and then we met again last night um, to see the total budget. And there was a lot of questions raised. And um, we had a couple of representatives from the community there. And um, we were just, we are just moving forward. Um, I really uh, respect what Patricia and Jordan have done. They are turning over every stone in looking at this budget. Um, we had initially asked for 7%, and last night Jordan did a comparison of a 30% uh, increase. Sorry, I almost said 30. 
Um, and so we really have a very good detailed um, budget. So we still have quite a few more um, meetings and um, I would send out the invitation to any school committee members uh, to join in on our budget subcommittee meeting so you have an understanding uh, when we present the full budget to you. Thank you. And, um, oh, yes. Michelle, may I add a couple of points? I'll take that as a <laughs> uh, uh, So for folks at home and for folks on the school committee and for faculty, uh, all employees, there is a, an FY24 budget development webpage. If you go to the district website um, and go to the departments, uh, you'll see the finance department. And there is a webpage there that has uh, both the calendar for all upcoming budget subcommittee meetings. And um, there is a copy of the slideshow presentation shared last week. We will continue to populate that page with documents as they are developed. Um, and uh, Michelle, all, just sharing also that we have a date of uh, January 30th, I think, uh, to meet with the Northfield Select Board and FinCom, and we are finalizing a date, uh, the 11th, the 11th, uh, to meet with the Berniston FinCom and Select Board, and we're, uh, Michelle, we're talking to you on Monday uh, about setting a date for Leiden. Thank you, and Warwick, okay. Trans Warwick Transition? I think we're hearing I do. an update on that. Michelle, would you mind if I share some specifics about, about the dates for next week that we're hoping, you know, we're hoping to uh, achieve things? No, go right ahead. Okay. I appreciate it. Uh, um, so as we shared at the last school committee meeting, uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, had received the three documents approved both by the school committee and the town of Warwick. They did return um, with a number of suggested edits and questions. I am grateful to Jordan uh, for representing the administrative team when I couldn't be there last Friday, along with a number of folks at the table who are on the Warwick um, mm -hmm. Transition Subcommittee who thoroughly reviewed all of Desi's uh, questions and suggestions, uh, hashed things out. Um, the revised documents have gone off to our respective attorneys. Uh, we are hopeful that we will have uh, revisions back from the attorneys, and I don't think there's anything uh, super serious about the revisions. Uh, Monday, if we can get the revisions to DESE by Monday at 3, they will turn them around in 24 hours, which means we could share them with you, school committee, 48 hours in advance of next week's meeting. All of that was to say, we're trying so hard to get you the revised documents so you could, we hope, approve next week, because um, next week is the 15th, and Warwick has that December 31st very hard deadline for the commissioner's approval. So again, thank you to Warwick. Uh, for your collaboration, and thank you to uh, the team at DESE. They are really, really, uh, gosh, for them to turn around three revisions in 24 hours is not typical, so we appreciate that. So I wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, our goal is to get you something by Tuesday. Is that, Jordan, am I missing anything? No, that was perfect. Okay, Michelle, anything else we wanna share, or Karen, or, or Nathan? No, thank you very much. Okay, great, thanks. Any other updates? I don't think anyone else has met since our last no, meeting. All right, moving on our to business. Um, gift of $150 from First Light. Discussion and vote. Yep, uh, so I just want, would like to uh, ask the school committee for approval for this $150 uh, gift from First Light. Um, this was because of the wonderful work, work of Deb Wood, a uh, longtime veteran here, uh, and um, who uh, runs the Coordinated Family and Community Engagement Program, so part of 
getting in our folks uh, very early and young and, 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 and then uh, you know, helping our early years program and ho helping our students uh, get engaged with the school at a very young age. So she does wonderful work. But um, she had participated in this event um, and ultimately uh, they were hoping to compensate her, but she uh, explained that she would prefer a donation to uh, the um, program instead. Um, so um, uh, that, that, that is the um, background on the $150 gift. So um, we're bringing it to the school committee to uh, get approval for accepting of that gift. Uh, and in addition to requesting approval to accept the gift mm -hmm. under the new policy because it is a cash equivalent gift, uh, the school committee needs to approve the way in which the funds would be used. So it's a two-part a two request. Uh, we request that you would accept the gift and approve disbursement of the $150 to support. Uh, right, to, to support the, the, CFC. Right, the CFC program, Deb Woods program. So. Um, the deposit would pro uh, would go into the special donations, and then it would be uh, kept track of separately, and, and then uh, Deb would be able to make uh, expenditures uh, of up to one hundred fifty dollars to support her programming. Do we have a special um, donation? Where does, I was going to ask where it resides. We haven't gotten the check yet. Okay, so when you get it, where does it reside? Yeah, it, it will reside in the uh, that special donations account, and then right, and then each one of the uh, donations are then accounted for separately um, within that account. So I move that we accept the gift. Oh, David has a question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, David. Well, I, I have a comment. Uh, First light is all over the local news mm -hmm. um, by some by some uh, people's judgment. Um, they're an environmental nightmare. I don't really want their $150. There's a full editorial in today's recorder. There's a letter to the editor, at least one today. There's been one. Um, they're operating under uh, four years later under, with no license, reversing the flow of the river. I don't need their $150. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. All right. Any other discussion? Well, it sounds like money in and money out. So I would vote that we accept the uh, donation of $150 to support the CFC program. I'll second. Any further discussion? Well, don't we also have to vote on the use? Do they, yeah, I, so they I, separate I, I thought that was, or, that was the motion. Or that's the motion, so yeah. we accept yeah. it and then approve to disperse. The, mo the motion is to accept it and approve the disbursement to support the CFC program. Right. right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Coffin, abstain. Karen O'Neill, abstain. Alan Genovese, yes. Gretchen Kelton, abstain. Nathan Swartz, abstain. David Young, no. Michelle Jeruso, abstain. Steve Martin, yes. And Raina Dastu, yes. So we have three yeses. Four. You have four. Three yeses, one no, everyone else abstained. I have four yeses, five abstains. Four of the four yeses. There are yeah, ten. I have four yeses, five abstains, one no. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get that? I got five, one, two. Oh, yeah, I'm not counting myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. So four yeses, one no, and five abstains. Yeah. So that motion passes. So, uh, who was the fourth yes? I, I didn't catch the fourth yes. So, I have Melissa as a yes, Jennifer as abstain, Karen O'Neill abstain, 
Uh, Alan Genevieve abstain. Nathan Schwartz abstain. No, no. David no, no, Alan was a yes. Alan's a yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I wrote that wrong. Gretchen was okay. abstain. David Gretchen was, was a no. Michelle abstain. Steve, yes. And myself, okay. yes. Okay, I, I got I got uh, Alan wrong for some reason. Thank you. Great. Okay. Great. And could I just really quick yes. clarify on when you abstain, you then change the, um, the the number of the majority. So this is something that we learned at our um, MESE um, conference that we went to. So if you abstain, you're taking your vote out of that. So that changes right. the. It passes majority. even on a four vote. Right. Right. Exactly. I just want to make sure everyone yep. is aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That is correct. Mm -hmm. All right, grant proposal for the Trout Aquarium. Discussion of okay. it. Um, well, we are bringing to you some exciting news uh, that Nikki Pullen and Cooper Bullock um, and others, or was this you two? Yeah. Others? Um, applied for a grant um, and received that grant. Uh, and I, so I, I need to issue an apology. Under the revised policy manual, I should have brought to you a proposal for a grant before uh, the grant was submitted to the funding organization. Um, we didn't do that. You have my apologies. That was not intentional. Uh, 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 I fully support this, uh, this project. Uh, it's Cooper, will you give us two sentences about the <laughs> trout and the eggs in the aquarium? So Ms. Pullen has been working really, really hard on this grant because she always wants to provide the most for her students. So this grant is to provide uh, like an aquarium for trout eggs that will be hatching in uh, AP environmental and regular environmental science classes. So those trout eggs are coming from the uh, mass wildlife. Um, and it's going to be a program to help teach us about uh, conservation, water quality, and population biology. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so it was the request was to the JEAH Memorial Fund. Uh, they have granted uh, the project one thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, you have um, in the materials you received today. This had not been part of the electronic packet. A copy of the award letter and a copy of the check that was received. So I would request uh, approval from the school committee to accept this grant money and to use it for the trout egg aquarium project. Can I just ask for clarification? Because um, I'm not remembering this. So is this specific to a grant proposal by a staff member? Or are we saying that because I don't remember the policy, I apologize, that all grants, because that sounds so, well, um, um, like that's just not going to work. <laughs> so so um, yes. Prior so approval. I would, be, I would be bringing, I was going to wait until the end of this <laughs> uh, after I hope to approve both the, the, the accepting the money and how to spend it. Uh, I was going to say that I would be bringing to the policy subcommittee a request to consider amendment to this. Because for this grant is eighteen hundred and fifty dollars, I, I don't. I, I would love to have the authority as the superintendent to approve submitting a grant proposal like this before, and not bring it to school committee for approval. Yes, accepting it uh, maybe, but not. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, keep us aware that you're applying for a grant, and and then you know a policy like that, and then we would then vote on accepting it. But to have you bring just seems so uncomfortable. It if you're gonna, if you're gonna also, ask yeah. permission, by the time we work through that process, have a meeting, do that, then you submit it. You probably missed the deadline, and then get it back again to go through that cycle again. It just doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. So I'd be interested in seeing how that policy could be written that satisfies the school committee responsibility, but makes it more streamlined so that it's it's done more efficiently. I will happily bring a suggested revision of policy DD, which I'm holding in my hand, to the policy subcommittee. Thank you. Um, yeah, so. I would like to move that we 
accept this um, grant from the Jill E. Harrington Hanselick uh, Foundation for um, use in the um, trout project that um, environmental science and AP environmental science are participating in under the leadership of the students and staff member Nikki Pullen. Do I have a second? So I mean, I, I'll second. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? Take it away. I uh, just have a oh, um, yeah. just have a question about um, ongoing like filter cost and like like yearly maintenance on. It. Is that? I'll I'll try to answer it a little bit. Uh, so this uh, grant is funding all the materials on this page right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that that will be built into whatever Ms. Pullen's ideas are for the next, like if this program continues to run, right. since the eggs are coming from Mass Wildlife. So if they continue to do the program, that will probably be something that Ms. Pullen requests another grant from this organization or another organization for okay. future. Sure, yeah. and it'll be like minimal. It looks like under $200 yeah, yeah. a year to yeah. continue to maintain. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. All right, Melissa? Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Coffin, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Alan Chinovich, yes. Gretchen Kelton, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. David Young, yes. Michelle Jerusso, yes. Stephen Martin, yes. And Raina Dastu, yes. So that passes unanimously. Yay. We look Yay. forward to thank hearing you. more about the trip. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Cooper. Thank you, all the students. And yeah. thank you, yeah. uh, Ms. Pullen. Yes, yes. So absolutely. absolutely. Terrific work. All right. Uh, request for disposal of surplus property. Uh, in your packets, you received a very brief memo um, at the request of the school committee. We developed this uh, to outline the materials formerly located inside the storage container at the ES uh, that we would hope uh, to dispose of. All right. Any questions? Just to get rid of it and not a cost associated with it, just. There's no cost. I, I believe it's just no to get rid of it. Am I right that the town yeah. volunteered to take it away? Yep. Awesome. So moved. All right. Seconded. Great. Any further discussion? Go ahead, Melissa. Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Coffin, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Alan Genovese, yes. Gretchen Kelton, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. <laughs> no, she just arrived. David? Michelle Jerusso, yes. Stephen Martin, yes. Yeah. And David? David, yes. All right, and Raina Dastu, yes. So that passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Not the trash. All right. Um, Six Town Regional Planning Board update. And I do need to apologize. Um, I. Uh, committed a little faux pas. I, uh, some things were going on in my personal life and I wasn't keeping up with my personal email very well and there was an invitation from um, Jane Dutcher, Jane Dutcher um, for the Six Town Regional Informational Night that happened last week and that I was supposed to send out to the committee and I didn't see that email so I apologize um, for not informing you all of that, that event. So Ellen, you have an update? So Tyler, I'm getting a lot of feedback here, so um, I don't know if what's happening over there, but I'm trying to be really careful that uh, I don't get that feedback. All right. So I'm going to try to be brief, but I don't want to lose the, the spirit of, of providing this update. Um, one of the things in order to um, address this, I did pass around a, a letter from our state uh, representatives and they've been following our work since the towns formed the uh, planning board. And so they uh, have a letter of support for the recent grant that we just received for $125,000. And the planning board is hoping that we'll get enough information um, as we are trying to finish our work 
to uh, make a recommendation to the towns on whether we should be proceeding or whether not. So we're, we still have uh, conversations to have. So we're looking in the process of gaining information. At a recent meeting that we had on Tuesday, there was um, a uh, suggestion and strong, I guess, uh, concern that or I should say importance, that we bring um, this to the school committee and have a presentation specifically for the school committee and the people could also see that and have access to, to that information uh, via the meeting being recorded. I want to let her know that, that she should probably be on mute. Michelle, you need to mute. Can you... Are you able to mute? Thank you. So, um, let's see, where was I? So, the planning board had put together. Sorry. That's okay. Had put together a, a PowerPoint presentation, and uh, Deb Pote did a voiceover so that uh, we had a consistent message because we we wanted to have a script that people could all agree to, so it wasn't one person's opinion in giving the presentation. So. Uh, that appeared to be well received. The thought was we wanted to bring it to the select boards and administrators and town officials in the in the six towns first, since they were the ones that had the initiative to have it go to towns and and have them vote to form a planning board to do this work. Um, and I just want to emphasize, it literally has been hundreds of hours. We we formed in November of 2019. COVID hit, and, and so then we did remote, and we did our best with small groups, but it, it, was, it had been a challenge. So um, we thought it would make sense to bring it back, because it's been a while, there's been new select board members, and you know people change over time, to do a presentation to them. We did one in Gil Montague that was all remote, uh, very well um, received, and there was a lot of participation. And then we had over 30 people recently from the four towns to have an update on our work and ask questions. But we really haven't had the opportunity yet to solicit feedback. And we also have not had the, uh, the forums that we wanted to have to really explain to people what we've learned we have a lot of information on our website. We'd like to continue to synthesize that, present it, so that people can have some time to let that marinate and then ask questions and provide feedback. So now that we've done part one, which was presenting it to the towns, we'd like part two to the school committee and have a conversation. We're looking at after the Christmas break and through this grant, to be able to do a number of things, but the main focus is a number of forums with reaching out to senior citizens, reaching out to the staff, to the parents, to the community, back with town officials again, to um, provide as much information and, and start soliciting that feedback. So I'm looking forward to working with the superintendent here as we want to make um, contact with PTOs in, in the in our, our communities and, um, and figure out ways that through our uh, technology here to reach out to people, to share information, and to solicit uh, people's feedback through inviting them to, um, to these forums. So that is, that's kind of the gist of the major focus of what we'd be doing. I was able to um, reach out to Cooper and we had a conversation about the possibility of, uh, because it's, it's about students. I mean, this whole thing is all about um, what are the possibilities if we merge the two districts together? You know, what are the issues to be concerned about? We spent a lot of time over the last three years, you know, identifying what the challenges would be. We've um, had a, a lot of information regarding the benefits for student services and programs. Um, we need to do more work on the financial piece and how that the implications for the towns. So um, reaching out to the students, um, I plan to meet with the representatives and student council next Thursday, get some feedback. But 
more, that's just going to lay the foundation of here's what we've been doing, here's what it's all about, here's what we're thinking, and do the same thing in the Gil Montague district. And then after the holidays, then come back and um, I'm planning on putting money in the, in the grant to have uh, our councils or representatives from this school go over to Gil Mon to uh, uh, Turnus Falls and have a have a meeting where we can do a PowerPoint presentation. We're not we're not doing it at this meeting. So this meeting coming up is just to lay the foundation, not really to answer a lot of questions and so forth, but just to give them some uh, basic knowledge about what's been happening. And then we do the same thing. And then we bring them together to facilitate a meeting of what are their thoughts? You know, what would they like to see? What, you know, what their concerns are and, and solicit feedback. Um, I think that would be an incredibly powerful uh, uh, information and to hear directly from the students. Um, I think that there's some thought that, you know, we're looking six, seven years down the road. That, that would be a misunderstanding that we have, um, we'd like to be able to at some point within the next 18 months, uh, so to have a, uh, if we're moving forward, to have the towns uh, act on this either for or against, and then, uh, and then see what towns or district wants to do in t to look at other options. In the meantime, um, and it seemed like it was getting a little confusing, but I think we can sort it out, the superintendent is looking at how do we, so I look at it, you have to have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, and so forth. And so this is either A or B, whichever you want. But at the same time, you need to look at how do we provide the best education to our kids now and in, in the immediate future. And that may be the now and the future, or it may not be. So I think we can, we can do this um, as a partnership, and that's what I'm looking for. I think that's what the states are looking for and the representatives, because we all want the same thing. We want to look to the future. We want to provide the best education for kids um, and figure out is forming this um, merger something that would produce that, or are there other alternatives if we're not doing that? Uh, what What's the next step? So we have, have, we, I think we still have. We have five members that are on the uh, on this school committee. They're also on the planning board. And what's really nice about the planning board is we don't agree on everything. We have a lot of different ideas, and out of that, we've we've really become stronger as a group, um, respecting the different perspectives that are shared, and then taking those under consideration as we continue our work. So um, I would open that up to uh, Karen. Do you, 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 and thank you. You attended the forum. Yes, um, and I think, and at our board meeting earlier this week, I think we talked about presenting that that PowerPoint to the school committee, and I think the sooner the better, because some people don't have much of an idea of what it's all about, and it would be good for everyone to understand it. It's also available on the website, right? Yes. Yes, and you may want to give that web, web address. I can never remember the thing. Yeah. We have it on the screen on all our presentations, but right. we could do that. And what we found is people are actually looking at that ahead of time. Yeah. And then they, they're coming to the meetings. It was yeah. pretty clear yeah. with specific questions. Yeah. And I, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. And that happened to Gil Montague as well. You could but, tell by the questions that they had really looked at that carefully. Can you send out the link to that website to everybody on Yes, I can get that to, um, to the superintendent and have that available on the website so people can see that. I'm assuming, but I don't know for sure, that there's a link from the website here to the Six Town Regional Planning Board website. I don't know. So that's something either. that really should happen because it's all about getting information out to parents and to the community so they, they can re review, you know, documents and develop questions and then they would be in a position to express concerns. We plan also to do some more surveys and hope to have more um, participation if, well, if, if we 
do end up having more surveys. I'm not sure, you know, we will. Um, and it also has come up, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, Patricia, but it's come up several times, you know, where's the superintendent stand on this? You know, they, they have, uh, I, they have a, a pretty good sense that um, the superintendent, Gil Montague, is, uh, I, I don't know if I want to, I'd word it this way, is willing to look at what might be possible, and he's attended meetings and he, when he could, and he's uh, made comments, he's come to forums and so forth. And, and that's really important because we want to hear perspectives and we want to be doing work with everyone's uh, thoughts and best thinking on this. And so I'm inviting you as well. And I know you've reached out that are looking forward to having some conversations around this. So that I appreciate. Yeah. Um, I have a couple questions. So you mentioned a survey or surveys that had gone out. It's quite possible I missed it, but was there a select group of people that were surveyed to begin? So that was a difficult process because uh, part of it was during COVID in the early stages. And then the next part was we were looking, we were looking for more participation uh, in, in both of the schools of the students. I don't think we found the right avenue. To me, the right avenue would be to earmark a 20 minutes or something and the teachers pass out the survey, get that information so that we can hear from folks. Um, we did, uh, we did get some information, but all, all of the information we got on surveys, I, I would say, because it's limited, it was, it was good information and comments, but it needs to be a little more depth and breadth to that to draw conclusions that you, you can feel comfortable with. Does that answer that first question you said? Yes, yeah. so limited, that's fine. What the, um, was there something specific that happened to initiate conversations for the restructure? Well, I was, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure. I think there were a number of things that were in play. Um, I know that the towns had formed what was the heart committee and, and uh, Michelle actually chaired that. And so we had a number of uh, meetings and that was um, honest education. You know, okay. and, and so the towns had formed that committee to, to um, see, I think the mission was uh, to see how we could offer the best possible education to our students um, that's, that was you know, sustainable. And I think, and now I'm gonna speculate, um, so I'm speculating. I think because assessments you know, were going up, and I, this is the same thing in Gil Montague, but the population, of, the student population was going down, we, both districts were, were having to limit opportunities for kids. Uh, you know, I had a student that graduated, I, I had a daughter, a student, I had a daughter that graduated in the, in the early 90s. Th there were many more programs and opportunities um, for her. And so I think my speculation is as the town saw that they were giving more money to the schools in their assessments, but they were seeing the, maybe the result uh, being that the kids, were having programs and services and courses not able to run that there was a concern. So I, again, that's speculation on my part. The second thing is, is that the towns began to look at what would be more sustainable. And I don't know what the jump off point was where they said, let's form a planning board to, to take a look at this because it's, it's um, created by statute and there has to be three representatives from each community. One has to be uh, a school committee uh, member mm -hmm. uh, from one of the from the districts, and so you know we have really good participation. The other thing I do want to say is uh, you know kind of recognizing that we've been really fortunate because we've been at this a long time, and we're hoping to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a train coming, <laughs> and that the people have stayed on the committee because they believe in the work that they're doing, and that they really want to look at. What is in the best interest of kids in the in the long run, and so that's that was our charge from the town. So that's our focus. And one more question. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say yeah. that we currently have no one on the board from the school committee who resides in Berniston. So if any of the three of you are interested, then. This is the guy to talk to. So if you're interested, oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Go we, to your moderator. Oh, we, 
we did get an exemption, and Jane Dutcher filled that yes. spot, but yes. we could very well have a resignation from Bernstein, so that would open up a school committee slot. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that would be good. So if interested, you would go to the moderator and get appointed. Whoever that is. Yeah, you can, so, okay. yeah, we can take um, that offline. But um, other questions? Do we need to move. Our, well, Did you have another, any other questions? So, so, what about, so I guess I'd like to have some kind of a discussion later on when can we, whether it be a special meeting or part of a meeting that has a lighter agenda or something, where we can actually have, you know, see the presentation and have a conversation. I yeah. think that's really we'll important. Take so a look let's let's over the next couple of meetings, and we'll, we'll mm -hmm. try to find a time. And then at some point, um, the superintendent, people have asked, "Where is she on this?" We, we yeah. that would be good. I, I'm happy to state exactly where I am. Oh, I'm fulfilling my job as I understand it, and as directed by this school committee. And this school committee has not directed me to form an opinion, to evaluate. Uh, and to dedicate significant time to the work of the Sixth Town Regionalization Planning Board, it would be inappropriate of me. Uh, it would be inappropriate of me to hazard some opinion. I do want to. Make I respectfully point. disagree. Okay, only be, yep. oh, Alan, be. I'm, I'm going to yep. finish. Thank you. Yep. Um, and uh, thank you for all of the invitations to meetings. Um, I receive invitations to many, many meetings, and I have been helping the Warwick Transition Subcommittee with an enormous process over the past year. Uh, no one from the board has reached out to me individually to say, hey, we'd love to chat with you. And some of the unfortunate comments made by members of the board in the media haven't helped generate a sense that there really is a, an interest in collaborating. I want to make sure, Alan, that if folks from the board are reaching out to our students, they're doing it through an administrator. So I would ask that that courtesy. That happened. OK. Okay, so it, just so that I'm, I, I um, tried to talk to John, but he's been out of the office. He sent me an email and asked me to get in touch with uh, Kathy Hawkins, which I did. And then she did some, I asked her to do some research about how much would it cost for a bus to do this and so forth. She, so she did that. So she's doing that at, as, she's handling that aspect of it. So I'm following protocol. Okay. And then. I would ask that you include me. When, when you're reaching out to our students, and if it's something like trying to have our students attend a meeting off-site, given that this is a six-town initiative, and I'm the lead district administrator, I would ask that you make me aware. Um, and that's okay, that's, that's, that's fine. And that's, mm -hmm. I assumed you, you have your administrators at those levels handling things like that, and they, they would inform you that that was the protocol, but I'd be more than happy to. I do want to comment, however, on, I have reached out and said I'd like to talk to you a number of times. Um, so I'm not going to go there over the last couple of years when you first came and trying to explain things to you. The second thing as superintendent, um, the, here's the role in, in terms of we, the committee, hire and fire the superintendent, we set policy, we approve budget, but you don't, and you're in charge. And so you shouldn't be coming to the committee to ask permission to do, um, to be doing your job. So this is, this was, you have a political job, you have a tremendous amount of responsibility. When the towns that you serve have put something together, it's important to the towns, so it should be important to you. And you, your participation doesn't necessarily mean you support or don't support, you know, it, it's being part of the equation of getting information and having conversations. So I respectfully disagree that you need a directive from the school committee to handle an aspect of your job that was put together by the towns, and we're doing their work. And we're reaching out to say, you're part of the district, you, you're trying to work with the towns, and I think it's a void if something this important that affects not only the towns but the, the students here, that okay. that's, that's a responsibility. And I get balanced. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you I here. I think we need to end this discussion right now because we need to move on and, and finish the rest of our agenda. I respect the balance that you have Thank to you. do. You have Thank a lot you. on your plate. David, did you have a, a comment? Um, yeah, I, I've heard enough tonight. Um, I'm going to leave now. And um, I agree with Alan. And I, I, uh, I would, if it's necessary, 
uh, call for a vote to direct the superintendent to become involved in this process. Um, I don't think it should be necessary, but if that's what it takes, I'm not aware that that we voted as a school committee to do this uh, whole assessment that has that is going on. It's just part of the superintendent's job. Well, in my opinion, so is this. I'll. Uh, I disagree. I'm sorry, I can't be seen, but I disagree with Stephen Martin. I would like us to. I would like to bring this to uh, have more time for this conversation. I have no idea or any context or background for us to give right now. Yeah, it feels only fair to present information to the superintendent before asking her to form an opinion, and that's where I, I stand on this as well. As it sounds, could be great, could be really awful, but with limited well, the idea of compelling the superintendent to do something seems to me not our not the kind of relationship we want to have. Okay, so moving on. Thank you for the update. Um, student enrollment update. Thank you. You have the student enrollment numbers. Uh, thank you, student representatives. Thank you. Thank uh, you. you. Thanks. Have you received the student enrollment numbers for December in your packet? Uh, what this doesn't show is the quick look I took at the December 1 numbers for a range of districts in the area. I am happy to report that the, um, we are one of the districts that has seen an increase in enrollment from December 1, 2021 to December 1, 2022. A number of other districts, and I took uh, special care to look at pre-K through 12 and 7 through 12 districts. They are losing students. Uh, we are not. Uh, we are not losing. Our overall numbers are higher than they were last year, and that is despite the loss of so many students in grade nine. So I hope we don't lose as many students in eighth grade, but. Uh, good on the district, good on the school committee for the work that you are doing, good on our teachers uh, for making attractive programs. Thank you. I'm happy to entertain any questions about these numbers. I find it very helpful to receive this type of information on a regular basis. Yes. So thank, thank you. you for that. You're welcome. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay. So I will now entertain a motion to enter into executive session. Um, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with PVRAA, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body, and um, because the chair so declares. Um, and we will return to open session for vote. So moved. Melissa Gary, yes. Oh, we have a second. You have a second. Oh, sorry. I just moved. Go second. Okay. Go ahead, Melissa. Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Goffin, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Alan Genevieve, yes. Gretchen Kelton, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. Michelle Thank Drew, so yes. <clears throat> Stephen Martin, yes. And Raina Dastu, yes. Yeah. Can I just ask who the second was? I couldn't see. Melissa oh. Gary. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are going to see it. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I okay. So the question was... For some reason... There's nothing, nothing for retirement. I don't think...
All right. Oh, yes. So we are returning to open session. Ooh, ooh. She has a phone. Where's my echo? There. Sorry. Did that fix it? That didn't fix it. Oh, what you looking for? No, I'm hearing an echo. Do you know where? I, but just for some reason, my mic is echoing. Is your computer still on? It is, but it's muted. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'll leave it. But I'm not seeing the TV. Oh, so are you not hearing the? Um... No, I can hear. I just can't see anybody yet. Oh, okay. I'll have to remember that for the next time. Yeah. We gotta, gotta move things along. Okay. Can you, you can, can you hear? Oh, well, you're on the meet, so you'd be able to hear us anyway. Well, all right. Are we streaming it? Are we, um, Streaming again? Not we're, yet. We're live? Okay. All right. So let's go. We, I would like to entertain a motion from the floor. Anybody have a? I'm reading it. Alan was reading it. That was the. It's on page four of. Of the minutes that okay. were uh, reviewed tonight. Yeah, I'm still not seeing anybody, so I'm not sure what's happening with the lead. Here. Okay. No, I'm, I'm lying. There. Yeah, I don't know. The cameras don't seem to be on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> Okay, I'd like to, to approve the agreement between the school committee and the Pioneer Valley Regional Educators Association um, enthusiast, and enthusiastically forward it to the commissioner for approval per the legislation of 2018. Second. Great. Any dis further discussion? Seeing none. Melissa, you want to take it away? Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Coffin, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. yes. Gretchen Kelton, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. And Steve? Stephen Martin, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Raina Dastu, yes. So that passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. All right. Any other business? Yeah, we'll postpone the um, staff personnel update um, to next meeting. Um, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Melissa Gary, yes. Jennifer Goffin, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Gretchen Kelton, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. And Raina, oh, Raina Dastu, yes. And Steve? Absolutely, Stephen Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Enthusiastically. No, no, Michelle's. You know. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone.